What's the secret of her peculiar style? Why does the whole world know her name? And how did her projects change the way we perceive architecture? Let's find the answers to these questions together. Let us know in the comments if you would like to see more videos on architecture on this channel. Like and share this video. We appreciate your support. In the world of architecture, Zaha Hadid is a real superstar. She is one of the few architects whose name is known to ordinary people all over the world. Her projects are easily recognizable, and we can see her face on the covers of magazines alongside actresses and actors. Not many architects can say this about themselves. Zaha Hadid was the first woman to receive the Pritzker Architecture Prize the most prestigious award in architecture. She pushed the boundaries of what is possible, inspired a whole generation of young architects, and made her style recognizable anywhere in the world. So what makes her buildings so unique, and how can we characterize them? Let's figure it out. Zahadid's path to success wasn't easy. Born and raised in Iraq, she studied in private school in England and Switzerland. After school, Zaha entered the American University of Beirut to study mathematics. In 1972, at the age of 22, she decided to devote herself to architecture and transferred to the Architectural Association School of Architecture in London to graduate in 1977 with distinction. Her studies showed her undeniable talent, and her professor Ram Kulhas described her as a planet in her own orbit. Kulhas was also the founder of OME, where Zaha worked after graduating from the Architectural Association. Not for long, however. Two years later, in 1979, she founded her architecture and design firm called Zaha Hadid Architects and created her first building when she was already over 40. For almost half of her career, Zaha Hadid's project stayed on paper, and not because the architect wasn't recognized. On the contrary, soon after receiving her diploma, she began teaching and won international architectural competitions one after another. In 1983, she gained fame for the project of the Peak Leisure Club in Hong Kong. It was meant to become her first building and launch her career. But the funding was cut and a big project never happened. This was Zahadid's first major disappointment. One can only admire her unbending will as her projects were rejected as impossible to build over and over. I don't see it as a real building, is the phrase she hears all the time. Thankfully, Hadid was an incredibly stubborn person. After realization of her first project, she never stayed without a job. This first project was the Vitra Fire Station in Germany, 1990-1993. But why did she have to wait so long to see her project come to life? You can always tell a work by Zaha Hadid from a work by any other architect. She drew inspiration from the Russian avant-garde movement, as she mentioned in her interviews time and again. And for a good reason, alongside Ram Kulhas, her mentors in the Architectural Association were Alvin Boyarsky and Elia Zangelis. All of them are great admirers of the Russian avant-garde, and they shared their love with Zaha, the most prominent of their students. This is why her designs look more like abstractions than the usual blueprints. Take her thesis project, for instance, its title is a clear reference to Architectons by Kazimir Malevich. Russian avant-garde artists are known for unprecedented courage in their experiments with architectural form. Many of them have remained paper architects, which means that their bold fantasies never were realized. As for Zaha Hadid, she used their findings to form her unique style. Her blueprints bear the influence of Malavich's suprematism and the projects of Alasitsky and Yakov Chernihov. Look how she folds and crushes the ordinary forms, arranging planes in a way that makes them look hanging in zero gravity. Any architect fills their works with references to the ideas and projects from the past and the present. To spot them easily and navigate in architectural styles, take our course Explore Architecture. The link to the course is in the description box. From the very beginning, Zaha Hadid strived to create architecture of a new kind, the one that hasn't been explored yet. There are 360 degrees, so why stick to one, she says. 
According to this rule, she took a new angle in architecture and decided to use painting and blueprints to explore form and space without caring about gravity and other formalities that fatter the imagination of an architect. The early period of her career explores deconstructivism. This architectural movement is closely connected with the philosophy of deconstructivism as well as constructivism, a phenomenon of the Russian avant-garde which flourished in the 1920s and 1930s. Representatives of deconstructivism try to rethink architecture as such, and it's not just Zaha Hadid. Ram Kohas, Bernard Shumi, Daniel Libeskind belong to this architectural movement too. In creating their works, they used the same technique as Zaha Hadid did in her early works. It's as if they imagine a building exploding and then reassemble it from the fragments. Thus, Zaha Hadid's early exterior and interior designs look angular, sharp, and geometric as if made up from shards. The same style is especially remarkable in her paintings. However, it wasn't deconstructivism that made Zaha famous. Since the early 2000s, Zaha Hadid's style has been changing radically. Angularity made way for curvy lines and free-flowing shapes. Why did that happen? A crucial role in this change goes to Patrick Schumacher. He joined Zaha Hadid Architects in 1988 as a student, collaborated with her on the Vitra Fire Station project, and later became her right-hand man. It was Schumacher who headed Zaha Hadid Architects after her death. Together, they developed a new style called parametricism, and Schumacher presented its manifesto in 2008, proclaiming it to be the main contemporary architectural style. This architecture uses parametric modeling that allows the creation of the most complex shapes, and this was how the usual geometric shapes, so well known to us, were replaced by futuristic curvilinear spaces without a single square corner. The parametric design wasn't a completely new phenomenon. It found application in various spheres, from art to software development, for a long time. And in general, parametricism as a movement was the result of the creative use of its capabilities. Together with Schumacher, Zaha Hadid proclaimed a new paradigm in architecture. They brought curvy lines instead of the usual rectangular spaces and unique forms instead of the old repeating ones. Ordinary buildings are opposed to nature, while theirs are organically woven into the landscape. In the history of architecture, similar visions had the Catalan Antony Gaudí and the Brazilian Oscar Niemeyer. Both these architects abandoned the ideas of straight lines and angles to create complex curved buildings. What's more, Zaha Hadid herself admired the works of Oscar Niemeyer. Architecture always went hand-in-hand -hand with scientific discovery, and Zaha Hadid's architecture demonstrates how they can work together in the 21st century. The odd look of her building's exterior is not a mindless result of computer modeling. On the contrary, it is a thought-out reflection of modern scientific concepts, complex systems, chaos theory, and non-linear dynamical systems. Let's not forget that the first degree Zaha Hadid received was in mathematics. Nature is Zahadid's main source of inspiration, this is how she puts it. People think that the most appropriate building is a rectangle because that's typically the best way of using space. But is that to say the landscape is a waste of space? The world is not a rectangle. You don't go into a park and say, my god, we don't have any corners. Parametricism allows creating forms harmonious with nature more than just in how they look. Parametric buildings recreate the logic of nature on the structural level. This is the reason why Zaha Hadid values such concepts as non-linearity, field, and fractal. And even if it seems that the shapes of her buildings are random, they follow a rigorous language of mathematical formulas. The buildings created by Zaha Hadid turned architecture upside down and brought space-like structures into cities. It's as if they belong to the world of the future, bright and beautiful. The architecture of the 20th century was functionalist, its motto being form follows function. This was the reason that almost all modernist architecture looks monotonous and alike. Zaha did answer it with a so-called anti-functionalism, putting form and idea in the foreground. 
Some say that the buildings she creates exist at the junction of three types of art, painting, remember drawings, sculpture, and architecture. Zaha did never lets us see the structure of a building. There's always an outer shell that covers the whole construction, leaving us to wonder how the whole thing holds together. Her buildings are spectacular and understandable at the same time, and this was the reason Zaha did won the love of people over the globe. Such architecture is a constant challenge for engineers. However, by challenging us, Zaha expands the boundaries of what is possible. It's a call to think wider, bolder, and more ambitious. Just as the Sydney Opera House was an engineering breakthrough in its time, the buildings of Zaha did prove that nothing is impossible, even if you have to face rejection after rejection for 20 years. No matter how complex in terms of construction, Zahadid's architecture always refers to the motifs of nature, dunes, living cells, coral reefs, and steep hills. Zahadid changed our understanding of the possibilities of architecture, showing that a curved and flowy building is not a fantasy about the future, but today's reality. And if her buildings seem weird to us, it's only because we are used to thinking in simple geometric shapes. Zahadid's main dream came to life. Zahadid Architects has created many masterpieces and is working on making parametricism an international style. One day, it's likely to become as accessible and familiar to us as the once modernist architecture. Would you like to live in cities shaped in Zahadid's style? Let us know what you think in the comments and tell us what topics you would like to see more on this channel. Don't forget to press the subscribe button and if you're one of those people who pays great attention to buildings and wants to learn all about this form of art, see our course Explore Architecture. We'll help you distinguish between different styles and eras and share our fascination with architecture with you. The link to the course is in the video description. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.